Now let's check out tonight's Keys to Success brought to you by Kia. And those keys come courtesy of the Golden State Warriors. They made a huge trade earlier today, acquiring Chris Paul. So let's bring our senior NBA insider, Adrian Wojnarowski, into the discussion, along with our front office insider, Bobby Marks. But Woj, I want to start with you here. How did the decision come together that Chris Paul was going to land in Golden State? Yeah, Malika, the first real significant decision of the Mike Dunleavy Jr. era as general manager in Golden State, the opportunity uh, to bring in Chris Paul, try to maximize this championship window around Steph Curry and deal with some of the financial realities facing the Warriors and this roster. Jordan Poole, four years, over $130 million left on his contract, goes out to the Wizards. Poole was a player that Mike Dunleavy Jr. identified when he worked for Bob Myers and the Warriors drafted uh, with the 28th pick of the first round. Woj, thank you. Bobby, it seems like with the new CBA, there, there's this race to sort of fit under the second apron. Can you walk us through where the Warriors are at financially? Yeah, Malika, when you look at the, the Golden State Warriors payroll, with Draymond Green on the roster in a $28 million cap hit, $243 million towards the luxury tax. When you look at Draymond Green off the roster, $67 million, so a $170 million plus difference here. Look, it, it's not my money, it's Joe Lake, Lacob's money, but I think Draymond Green is worth that big luxury tax hit to re-sign him here. Bobby, thank you so much. The pick is now in. JJ, in just a little bit, I do want to get your thoughts on how Chris Paul is going to fit in with this roster, but before we do that, let's hear who is headed to Golden State and from NBA Commissioner Adam Silver. With the 19th pick in the 2023 NBA Draft, the Golden State Warriors select Brandon Pojemski from Santa Clara University. Brandon Pojemski from Santa Clara. When he transferred from Illinois to Santa Clara, he, he really broke out here in the WCC. He's only 20. He has so much upside. We're going to get back to Brandon in just a minute. But, JJ, your thoughts here on Chris Paul, the veteran headed to Golden State. Well, a couple things really stand out. First of all, it's the contrasting styles between Chris Paul and Golden State. Chris Paul likes to play slow. He likes to play methodical. Right. Golden State likes to play fast. They like to play chaotic. Now, Chris Paul has the second most assists assist since play-by-play -play tracking began on three-pointers, and he's gonna go be paired with the two greatest shooters of all time. The second thing that really jumps out to me is if Draymond Green re-signs with the Golden State Warriors, referees are gonna have an absolute <laughs> nightmare calling those games because those two guys <laughs> chirp more than anyone else. And I wanna say one other thing, I absolutely love this pick. Mm. And you know, the Golden State Warriors are looking for someone who can contribute right away. Pajimski can shoot the basketball on the move. He can shoot it on the catch. Yep. He can shoot it off the dribble. And I love that he plays with an edge. I know the ref just up for the task. <laughs> yeah. It's Richard Jefferson. Just kidding. Jay, let's talk a little bit more about Brandon here because JJ mentioned shooting. We know that Golden State hasn't necessarily been interested after they did sort of a youth experiment here with, with that. But what does Brandon bring to this roster? Well, he's a lefty, and he's very good athletically. He's got a 39-inch vertical. But to JJ's point, he's an outstanding shooter. You know, a versatile scorer that can make plays, and he's a good passer, but shoots 44% from three. Excellent in catch-and-shoot situations. Very good off the dribble. Average 20 points a game. Uh, at Santa Clara, shot 48% overall from the field, and now he joins Steve Nash and Jalen Williams as first round picks from the Broncos. I mean, you mentioned him playing hard as a guard, averaged just under nine rebounds per game, brings a lot of energy. And now he's with Armonica McNutt. Let's go to them. Brandon, I got a little history for you. I love when I can start these interviews with this. You become just the third Santa Clara player to be drafted since Steve Nash in 96 and Jalen Williams did it last year. How special is that for you? Yeah, I think it's a, a special a big shout out to Jalen. Uh, he's part of the reason I went to Santa Clara this, this past uh, year in the portal. Uh, just seeing him do it and how high he got, uh, I tried to follow in his footsteps. Your parents, John and Barb, are with you. I can tell you our analysts are already talking about his shooting ability and the organization that just drafted him. But having watched him from a young man to now in his basketball career, what are the Warriors getting in your son? 
a hard grinder, a dog. Yeah. I mean, you're going to see some, you just don't understand his work ethic. He went to a military school. Someone says, jump, you don't ask how high you do it. He will run through a wall for this organization. And he gets to have Steph with him. Priceless. That Priceless. hat has to feel pretty good, huh, Brendan? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yesterday in media, they was asking me who I want to go up against. And I was like, Steph. But now just being with him, uh, you know, there's a lot of Milwaukee guys out there already. Uh, so I'm really familiar. Obviously, Santa Clara is just right down the road from there. So I'm super excited, blessed. Uh, God put me in a great situation. John, Barb, congratulations. Thank Brandon, you. congratulations. Thank you. So I much. appreciate it. Monica, thank you. I mean, playing with Steph has to be a little bit better than just playing against him. And now he is going to get the chance to.